in the Bible of the Christians, clearly stating that the Pharisees, those responsible for the Sanhedrin, were in fact the corruptors of the religion. And unless your righteousness exceeds theirs, you're going to go to hell. So if you know anything about Christianity, you know that Jesus is telling them they corrupted it and it's not God's religion anymore. Then when Moses comes to his people, he's telling them that what came before them was also null and void. And he's got what? The commandments. And we would have done the same thing because we're human beings. We would have, except Allah promised in the Quran that he would preserve the Quran till the sun rises from the place that it's set. And the Quran has not been corrupted, has not been changed. It's exactly today as it was recited at the time of Muhammad, peace be upon him. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa wa rasulullah wa ala alihi wa sabi ajma'ina sharu la ilaha illallah wa ashara wa muhammadin abduhu rasul ma'abad. Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah. They asked me to talk on the subject today of what's called interfaith dialogue. But those of us that deal with other faith groups, especially in these days, have come to notice a certain amount of shall we say, apprehension at least on their side and in some cases some very aggressive propagation of information that's not necessarily all the truth. So how do you deal with that? I'll give you an example. Somebody says to you, are you a Muslim? You say yes. How come you're a terrorist? How are you going to answer that? How come you got four wives? How many of you got four wives? How many of you got three wives? Let's put it like this. How many of you even don't have any wives at all? <laughs> you want to get married? Yes. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> but how do you deal with that? Somebody come to you and they say this kind of stuff. Somebody will come up to you and say, well, how come you guys have to beat your wives? I'm from Texas. You know, my wife is from Texas. You don't even think about hitting your wife in Texas. She's got a frying pan that big. You know what I'm saying? And she said, you got to go to sleep sometime. There's no way Muslims are doing stuff like this. How? But yet this is the general perception of a lot of people about Islam. They talk to us about killing people, about attacking people, forcing people into Islam. We're hearing a lot, a lot of things that really don't describe Islam at all. So how do we deal with it? What do we say? What do we do? I even had some of the brothers come to me and say, we can't do Dawah these days. I said, why? They said, it's too hard. We're in a situation this didn't happen before. It's not like, you know, we just go out and give somebody a nice pamphlet, a booklet, a business card, tell them about a website, have a nice day. You can't do that anymore. But I'm going to ask you a question, and I want you to be honest about it. If you know anything at all about the message in the messenger, then you know the answer to this question. Did Rasulullah wasalam, have to suffer these same types of aggressive behavior from others? Yeah. Did he have to experience these difficulties or worse? And the answer is yes. Did he and his companions go through the same or similar conditions where people were lying about them? Making stories against them? Yeah? And didn't Allah tell him in the Quran what to do about it? A brother came to me, he became Americanized. You know what it is to become Americanized, right? That's when you come from India to the West and you throw away anything that even remotely looks like Islam, lose the kufi, forget the beard, 
get some t-shirt that says, you know, I love New York, something like this. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And change your name from Muhammad to Mo or Mike. Right? One of the Americanized brothers come to me and said, Brother, this is the worst time to be a Muslim. I said, what? I said, this is the best time to be a Muslim. Don't you talk about, and didn't you hear as you were growing up, people say, how I would love to have lived at the time of the Sahabi. You heard that? You heard people say, wouldn't it be nice to live at the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to be with him, to be close to him, to experience with him, oh, the wonderful days of Islam. You've heard people talk like that, yeah? Yes? Well, that's what you got right in front of you. This is your opportunity. Hello? Right in front of you. It's the best time to be a Muslim. And there is a little bit of effort from your side needed, but certainly you'll be highly rewarded for it. If you will take the time to learn, become educated about real Islam, spend the time with the real scholars, learn Arabic, study the Quran, learn the Hadith of Muhammad wasallam. find out the difference between a real Hadith and some of these fabrications and weak Hadith that people are trying to offer, telling you it's our deen. Spend time with the Muslims, the believers. Build up your own reservoir of patience. And you can do that in Salah. Yeah. Some of you, alhamdulillah, you're praying five times a day. Almost. Close. Yeah? Almost. Mashallah. This last week, somebody said he prayed four or five times in one day. Mashallah. But how about, how about if you pray every day on time in the masjid? How about that? And how about if you make it not just to the end of Juma? You know what I'm saying? You know, end of Juma, right? You got it figured. 117, he'll be through. I can catch the last part of the last rakah. Leave my shoes at the back door, I can be the first one out. Yeah? You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I call it the smoker's row in the back. You know, everybody smells like smoke back there. Here they are out there. Until the last second, when, when they hear the Imam is saying, Allahu Akbar, and he's going to Ruku, not into Takbir al Haram, no. He's going to the last Ruku, and then a. Go run in and, you know what I'm saying? Alhamdulillah, you're doing salah. But is this the real quality salah? Is this the real way? And you want to complain, oh, Islam difficult. Yeah, you're making it difficult for yourself. Seriously, you're living at the time that the Sahabi would be happy for a chance to go through the opportunities coming to us every day. They would be happy. But they wouldn't do what we do. They would take Islam very serious. They wouldn't consider attending a conference once in a while to be big dawah. They would consider this something necessary. They would consider this something important. But they would also be participating daily in their proper acts of worship. So if you are doing salah, as you should do salah, and you are doing your dhikr and dua, getting up in the night and praying to Allah subhanahu ta'ala, then you're going to see a lot of things change for you. But don't blame anybody but yourself if you're having your difficulties with Islam and presenting Islam to other people. Anybody understand what I'm talking about? Yeah. So that's the first thing. You want to solve the problem, begin with yourself. I have to do it every day. And so do the brothers who work in this same capacity. We all have to work on this. Secondly, is to have an idea about the other people that you're talking to. Where are they coming from? Some of them are innocent people. They've been lied to. And some of them are the liars that are lying to them. But usually you can tell the difference 
Especially when you begin to answer the questions. And you can see that if you give them the answer, they go, oh, I didn't know that. Oh, really? Tell me more. Okay, that's somebody who really wants to know. But in the case of a liar, he'll just say, oh, yeah, well, what about this question? And you start to give them the answer, yeah, yeah, well, what about this question? Okay, he's one of the liars. In the case of the first one, this is the one Allah is telling you to argue with them in a way that is better. And stay with them and talk to them in a good way. But in the case of the second one, Allah says, فَمَحِلِلْ أَمْهِلْ هُمْ رُوَيْدَ Let them go. They plan. And Allah plans. And the rhetorical question, who's the best of the planners? Let them slide. Don't sit there and argue with them point after point after point. And don't let them tear down your iman. And don't go to the websites. Repeat after me. I, hello, repeat after me. I will not go to any websites except Yusuf Estes website. I mean, there we are. <laughs> Seriously, don't go to their websites because you're raising their status on the internet and you're causing more people to go to them when they do a Google and search on the internet. And Allah will ask you about it. Now that you heard me say it, you're going to be asked. You can't do it anymore. Somebody sends you an email, go check out all these bad websites against Islam. Who do you think originated that email? The guy who made up the websites. Because he knows you'll go click, 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 click on every one of them. One of the most recent ones, talking about a fake Quran. And I'm not going to tell you the name of it because I don't want you to go Google it. If you want to know about it, come to my website and I'll show you what it is. Tell you about it. But it's a big joke. I've seen it. 77 chapters. None of them more than about 14 verses. And the worst kind of Arabic. And they say it's better than the Quran. <laughs> what a yoke. But for sure, they got a lot of presence right now on the internet simply because you have been clicking the wrong links. So be careful about that. Don't support their negativity by giving credibility to it. You follow what I'm saying? When people say something bad, counter it with what? Something good. Rasulullah sallallahu said, Man kana yukminu bila wal yawmul akhir yakhulu khair aw yasmut. He said, let the one who believes in Allah in the last day either say good or be silent. So how is it that you think it's good to talk about things that people are attacking Islam? Is that good? No. But some of us are spending all day long just talking about the negativity. And what is the benefit? You bring your iman down. You bring down the iman of everybody around you. Talk about what? La ilaha illallah. Kalama tayyaba la ilaha illallah. Allah says, that in the Quran itself, he bears witness to la ilaha illallah. Allah says it. So why shouldn't we be saying this? None to worship except Allah. Start out with what, when you talk to these people, start out right away telling them about it. Let me give you an example and I'll finish. Inshallah. Somebody comes up to you. You're Muslim? Yes. How come you worship a black box in the desert and you kiss the ground five times a day? Whoa! You ever notice the characters I do all have Texas accents? Yeah. <laughs> and it has nothing to do with the president, by the way. What I just... <laughs> what, what I just want to get across to you is how do you respond to a guy who comes to you like this? This is very nasty to come to some person and talk like that. Like that. You say back to him, thank you for asking me about my religion. See how I did that? Dr. Zachar Knight style. Go like this. Yeah? Say, thank you for asking me about my religion. Huh? Because they're going to go, what? I wouldn't ask him about his religion. I'm trying to insult the guy, you know. Thank you for asking me about my religion. Islam is based on two things. First, 
the truth. I have to tell you the truth or I can go to hell forever. This is our deen. Ya yuladina amanu ataqala wa kulu kaulin sidida, Allah says in the Quran. And the second thing is, we have the proof. Every single thing about Islam has been recorded and authenticated and we know what it is. We can't change it. Even if we wanted to, we can't. It is recorded and it's there. The Quran is the same Quran in Morocco as it is in India. It's the same Quran in South Africa as it is in Sweden or Denmark or Norway. It's the same Quran that you find in Texas or Sri Lanka. There's only one Quran and it's always the same. And this goes for the Hadith of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They're the same. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave us very clear instructions. When somebody asked him, tell us about the deen of Islam, something only you could tell us. And he said to the person, Kul Say, I believe in Allah and be steadfast on what you said. And you can't change this. This is what Islam is about, yes? So we have it. We have the truth and we have the proof. And by the way, sometimes people ask questions that are not really questions. These are statements disguised as questions, but they're statements that aren't necessarily true. I'd like to give you an example. Suppose somebody came to you and said to you, can you answer this question for me, yes or no? You go, okay. Is your mother out of jail yet? Oh, my mother's never been, ah! It's a yes or no question. But she never, yes or no? But my mother never, yes or no, is your mother out of jail? Well, she's not in jail, so I guess she's out, so... Yes. Good, I'm glad she got out. You can't win, right? So let them understand that from the beginning, that there are questions that people ask that are not fair because they have statements in them that are not true. And then finally, while I'm answering your question for you, if you hear something, you recognize something in what I'm saying is true and it's good and it's something better than what you have. Are you prepared to reconsider your situation and consider worshiping your God and my God, your Lord and my Lord? Worship Him without partners because you see, that's all Islam is really about. Believing in God and doing what He wants you to do. Are you ready for your answer? You see what you just did? You see how you just turned around a very negative situation to something very positive for Islam? Because if he said, yeah, I'm ready for the answer, you're ready to give it to him now. We don't kiss the ground and we don't worship a black box. In fact, we prostrate to the God who created everything by putting our head on the ground the same way the prophets did, mentioned in the Bible. And we worship the Lord of the universe, and we do it in unification, all facing the same direction. No different even than what the Jews do today, because they always face Jerusalem, yes or no. But Allah ordered the Muslims to turn from that Qibla, from that direction, from Jerusalem to Mecca. And the Muslims did. So that's simple. At this stage, the person would be forced to acknowledge what you're saying is true. And then when he said, well, yeah, that makes sense, then you can say, remember what you said in the beginning? That if you found something that made sense, that was better than what you had, you'd consider worshiping God without partners. You ready to start? Now, at this stage, he may or may not want to know more about Islam or become a Muslim, but at least in the future, he'll think twice before he tries to attack another Muslim. Make sense? Yeah. And that's really all we're supposed to do anyway. Share the message in a very positive and affirmative way. This is Islam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us success, tawfiq in this, and increase us in our ibadah, and make all of this work for us in the day of judgment. Ameen. Zakhmala khair. Wassalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Without any further ado, I guess we can go.